Hey there. Do you remember when Twitter made some mistakes and Mastodon suddenly got an influx of new users? Do you remember that? Yeah, so I, I was not exactly meaning to talk about Twitter right now, but what we can do or hope as a community, and I'm talking about Linux community right now, is um, we can't really hope to take uh, users away from corporations. Corporations can only uh, basically give us their, their users by making mistakes, right? So what did Microsoft do now? Yesterday they announced that they are about to put a feature into Windows 11 which will take screenshots of our whole screen every couple of seconds or something like that and it's going to uh, if I recall correctly, it said something like out of 250 gigabyte drive, they will reserve like 25 gigabytes and this will be enough for about uh, like three months of uh, storage for screenshots of our desktop. This feature uh, is supposed to give you uh, some kind of leverage uh, where you are trying to remember what you did, when you did it, uh, what you wrote, to whom. Uh, where did you put that picture of a brown leather bag, you know? Uh, <clears throat> you know, when you forget things, you know that you have dealt with them, but you don't know when or where, so you would just ask your local AI. AI, AI, AI. AI. And it would find it for you and tell you when you did it. Uh, I, I don't know too deep uh, about this topic, it's brand new and I'm pretty sure that we are going to find out how it works once it uh, is fully released. Um, but when um, when this was announced yesterday, people kind of freaked out. There could be this reaction from some people that this is pretty creepy. Microsoft is taking screenshots of everything I do. Yeah, I mean that's why that it can only do it on the edge. Uh, and r rightfully so. But let's kind of step on the ball for a moment. Uh, I am, I have no plans to defend Microsoft on this one, uh, although they did have a pretty straight face explaining how they're going to take scre screenshots of our desktop, like it's a completely normal thing to do. Um, I, I don't think so. I don't think that's a normal thing to do uh, to your users, but hey, they said uh, like they're going to use uh, your local compute power uh, to do that. So wh what does that mean and how is that good? So basically the premise uh, is that unlike uh, the regular AIs that we are used to using in, a, in the last couple of years, uh, this new one is going to use a custom Qualcomm chip uh, on your laptop. You're going to have to buy a, a different laptop uh, or a different computer in order to access this functionality. And this is going to help the AI to do its thing, do its magic, right? So how is this going to function uh, locally? It is going to process everything locally and it's not going to send anything to Microsoft. If we are to trust them uh, by doing what they promised, right? So can you trust a corporation? Can you trust anyone? I, I, I don't think so. I mean... Uh, Every business is uh, is um, a capitalistic uh, organization. They are here for our money primarily and nothing more. If they can uh, give us some decency of privacy alongside with getting our money, they will do that. Uh, if they cannot get both, uh, then something is going to give, right? And I'm going to leave it up to you to decide what it, what that is going to be. Um, but what what concerns me is not actually their promise. I uh, sort of believe that they are going to do what they are promising to do and that they are going to compute everything locally. What actually worries me is human mistakes. And every human makes mistakes. Every programmer makes mistakes. And every large pool of programmers makes uh, a large pool of mistakes. So... What I see is happening here is that 
we are going to type some of our passwords, we are going to type some of our credit cards information, we are going to type some of our uh, private secrets, uh, you know, talking to your uh, relatives, your wife about uh, stuff through, through chat or something that you are not comfortable about sharing with the rest of the world, right? It's your private life. And um, there may be some private photos that you are definitely uh, ha have not planned to share with the world. I mean, we do share a lot of photos, right, with uh, a, a lot of um, social media, but there are many other photos that we are not really prepared to share. And we are going to trust the maker of our computer uh, or the maker of the operating system on our computer that they are going to safeguard our information. And um, the problem with this is that um, no software is actually bulletproof. And we all know that. We hear stories about people getting a lot of viruses on their computers. Uh, we, we hear stories about malware, about uh, ransomware. And if you think about how all these uh, unwanted soft works uh, is that once they land on your computer they crawl through your computer they some of them delete your data some of them uh, lock your data uh, behind the paywall so you have to uh, pay for a ransom to to get your data released some of them will steal your data and send it god knows where and in this case microsoft is going to make it easy for them and put all our secrets in just one place so when the next ransomware comes uh, they will target the precise spot on our computer just take everything and there you go you have a problem and how, we, how are we going to deal with that? I mean um, the best case scenario that I see here is that uh, once mistakes start happening Microsoft is going to say oh, we are sorry, we are going to do better. And they might, but how is that going to help you to feel better if, he, if it was your data which was being stolen because there was a flaw in the operating system, there was a bug that some um, uh, antivirus software wasn't able to catch in time or, or any other combination of, um, of events, right? So one of the things we can do is pretty much refuse to use such a software uh, i have been using personally linux for a long time i have been a linux user for uh, like like in an off and on um, momentum but lately um, some of the moves that uh, microsoft has been doing has been have, have been kind of putting me away uh, from even wanting to dual boot uh, and as a long time Linux fan and, and a fa fan of free software uh, and my personal freedom I really love Linux uh, and this is really not up to, up to debate right but uh, when you put these things on a scale what do I miss by being a full-time Linux user there are a couple of things um, I cannot use Adobe tools. This is a relatively popular topic, although personally I don't need those. Um, but there might be a couple of VR games that I like to use. I cannot use them on, on Linux. Uh, I can explain why, although some of you are already writing in comments how VR is actually possible on Linux. Uh, in my case, it's really not. Um, there may be some other things that uh, could be functioning better in, in Windows and usually that's uh, on the proprietary side of software but personally I have been a um, free software user for a long time no matter the uh, operating system base under those uh, programs um, so I'm not going to miss uh, Windows I haven't been using Windows for a while now uh, and I don't have a problem with Microsoft advertising Linux like this uh, 
you know what I mean? And uh, basically, that's all that I was going to say, right? So uh, I'm not going to tell any one of you who is watching this video, do not use Windows. It's not up to me to, s to decide anything in your name. However, I need to put some information in your head so you can make uh, an educated decision on your part. This is totally not up to me. This is totally up to you and nobody else. Personal, maybe even spiritual decision. So whether you're liking the direction that Microsoft is going or not, um, I would actually like to hear about it uh, below in the comments. Feel free to tell me anything uh, that you think uh, regarding this video. So um, see you in the next one.